हाय एवरीवन वेलकम टू कैंपस एक्स इस वीडियो सीरीज में हम लोग देखने वाले हैं हाउ कैन वी इंप्लीमेंट थ्रेडिंग एंड मल्टी प्रोसेसिंग इन पाइथन आज के वीडियो में हम लोग सीखेंगे व्हाट इज थ्रेडिंग हाउ कैन यू यूज थ्रेडिंग वेर इट इज यूज हाउ कैन यू इंप्लीमेंट दैट इन पाइथन और फिर लास्ट में हम लोग देखेंगे सम थ्रेडिंग सिंक्रनाइजेशन ठीक है सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्ट सो वॉट इज थ्रेडिंग नॉर्मली वेन वी राइट प्रोग्राम्स वी टेंड टू यूज ऑनली वन थ्रेड Every process has a single thread running, which is called the main thread. What it does is okay, it runs your code sequentially. Now, if you have some code which you want to run concurrently or simultaneously with some piece of code, then you have to use multi-threading. What are threads? Threads are typically, theoretically, basic unit of CPU utilization. Now, a process, a single process, can have multiple threads running. so multiple codes running at that same time but it all the threads share that processes code data files matlab variables share karte hain but every thread has different register and uh, a separate stack of their own now let's see why would we need a multi threaded process ek example dekhte hain so for example let's say you have to run an application have you ever wondered how this application screen is kept alive so normally what everyone uses is let's say a function display screen which shows a static image for a time period let's say 1 millisecond and then the screen goes away now when you apply this function in a while loop this display screen function shows multiple images in a very short period of time uh, it almost seems to us that uh, the application is running whereas it's just multiple images staying uh, for a period of time and then going away Now imagine what happens if you introduce a heavy operation inside this while loop. You guessed it right. You will have a screen flicker because this heavy operation needs to be completed before the display screen function runs and shows your screen. So every time this loop this loop runs, you will have a screen flicker, which is not a good experience user experience. In fact, it is the worst of the user experiences. So let's say we have Uh, a network call here let's say i have an image url and i am storing the image in a variable and this display screen i am passing that image to this function and it uh, shows the image inside here so whenever this loop runs it always calls a network request now network request can take up to 1 second so your screen will just pop up for pop up after every second which is not a good exp- user experience now how can be use multi threading to uh, solve this issue we change the structure a little bit let's say we have a global variable image now before executing this function display screen before going to this while loop we start another thread inside that another thread inside a while loop we just pass in the network request we just do the network request using the image url and we store the image in this image global variable now since all the threads of a process share the processes variables it can actually this uh, thread can actually use this image variable now the display screen whenever the image is filled is not null the image, uh, display screen can just display the image whenever it's available so this way you have you are running mul- concurrently multiple pieces of code Now another example where multi-threading could be used is in servers. Now server can service multiple requests in different threads. But I said that threads run concurrently. That is actually not true. Let's say we have four threads and this is the CPU execution. The CPU continuously switches between threads. So in here in this diagram, it the CPU executes a bit of thread one, then goes to thread two and executes a bit of thread two, then goes to thread three, then thread one. and so on so at a point of time the cpu is executing only one thread but since it switches between different threads it gives us the effect of concurrency now let's go and see how we can implement this threading in python so here i am at pycharm so let's say i have a function called something it does something okay for now let us just mimic this function by sleeping for 1 second actually this sleep function is not available so i from time i have to import this sleep function and also i'll import the time function so i have a function 
which sleeps for one second. This is just mimicking some heavy operation. So let's say uh, before doing anything with this function, let us just note the start time here. And we'll do something here. Do something with this function. Do something. And let us just store the end time. Okay. After doing something. And then I can just print out that the main thread ended in some seconds which is actually let's make it an f string f string not an s string end time minus start time seconds and in here let's say i am running this function something for two times so how much time will this main thread take so if i go and run this function so you can see that the main thread took two seconds because each something function takes one second. Uh, it just sleeps for one second. To understand better, let's give it a print statement that going to sleep. To understand exactly when the, our function is going to sleep. And let's say when it wakes up, it just writes woken up. Now if we run the something function, it says it going to it goes to sleep it wakes up and then the second function goes to sleep and so on now let's say i have to execute this function 10 times so let me make a for loop for in range 10 this actually is a throwaway variable and i run the something so it will run sequentially and it will take almost 10 seconds to run okay so the main thread ended in 10 seconds and it actually ran for 10 times now what if we could use threading to execute this something function 10 times. Let's say to identify this function which function is running I have an id variable which prints out. Let's say we print it when it goes to sleep and when it wakes up to understand which function went to sleep and came back from sleep. To implement the feature of threading we have to import threading first the threading module in python. To create a thread, we just write threading dot thread. Inside this, we have to pass a target function. Target is the function reference that we want to run in a different thread. So here we pass the something. Do not run this function now. Just pass the reference, the name of the function. Okay. Now, when you have to pass arguments to this function, you pass it in the args variable as a list so let's say the id of this function will be zero okay now we have just only created the thread then we write t1 dot start let's see what happens when we run this code okay so what happened here first the main thread created this thread and started this function on a set on that thread so it prints going to sleep and it just prints the id and then it says main thread ended and then it says woken up so what actually happened here that the main thread it started the other thread and continued it continued its execution and the script finished this background thread kept running it was just sleeping for one second when it woke up it just printed woken up now I would like a feature where the main thread ends after its children thread are dead. So for this, we have a function called join. When we run t1.join, the main thread will wait for t1 to complete its execution and then the main thread will end. Now that we have this in place, let's run this. It says it going to, it's going to sleep, then it woke up and the main thread ended in one second now let's create another thread and run the same function and in another thread to mimic that we are running multiple functions and inside this args i'm going to give it an id of one then i do t1 dot start now notice okay sorry not t1 dot start t2 dot start 
Now notice that I did not write t1 dot join after t1 dot start. Let's let's uh, let's do t1 dot join here. So this is not actually what you want. So if you see how the main thread will proceed, so the th main thread will create the t1. Uh, actually, it starts the t1 thread. It waits for the t1 thread to complete. It starts the t2 thread. Then it waits for the t2 thread to complete. This is sequential access, and we don't. We actually don't want it. So therefore, what we would want is this thing. We start both the threads at the same time, and then we wait for both the threads. Now, when we run this function, all the threads got kicked off at the same time, and they woke up, and the main thread still ended in one second, not two seconds, which happened in the case of sequential access. Now, what if we would want to run uh, this something function ten times? Of course, let's make a list. Let's use the for loop. So let's make a list function. Uh, let's make a list now. Threads. Inside this, I'll use list comprehension to fill this list. So I'll be creating ten threads to run ten different function, which will run something function, and it's args will be uh, something let's not define it now for i in range let's say 10 and its id is going to be i i'll be deleting everything so we are creating 10 threads now we have to start th those threads so for thread in threads we do thread dot start now the main thread will start all these threads and end that is not what we want so we want to use the join function to make the main thread wait till the children threads are uh, they have finished execution so what we do thread dot join here you might be tempted to do this but don't do this actually because this will mean sequential access so instead of doing this you have to create another function where you have to write threads thread dot join so it starts all the threads then it waits for all the threads to complete and then the main thread uh, finishes now let's run and see all the threads got kicked off at the same time and then they woke up at the same time and the main thread still finished in 10 one second not 10 seconds which was the case of sequential access so this is how would you would use uh, threading in python now let's see some synchronization issues with threading let me demonstrate to you another example where we, we would want to synchronize threads. So let's say we were building an accounting software uh, which has a variable called balance and it, it, the balance initially has 200 whatever currency you want to want, uh, interpret it as. So let's say we have two functions one deposit which just takes in an amount okay for now i'm writing pass and we have another function withdraw it also takes an amount okay now let's say we uh, pass just to get rid of the exception there error there now let's say what this deposit does it updates the balance it increments the balance uh, by this amount so balance plus equal to amount uh let's say the main okay this balance uh, variable cannot be accessed so we have to write global balance because we want to use the global variable that's why you have to use the keyword global let's say it does not it does not add the amount once it adds the amount let's say 10 times okay let's say 10 times this is the special requirement of our deposit function and same is the case with our withdrawal function here instead of adding the amount we just subtract the amount okay it 10 times in fact let's make a times variable and it will run for the times that it's passed inside so same is the case here and times now what we would want to do is run these uh, functions in different threads Let's import the threading module, import threading, 
now what we want is a different thread for executing the deposit function and a different thread for executing the withdrawal function so let's say deposit thread is threading dot thread and we pass the target as deposit do not run the function now because we just want to pass in the reference the thread will run it when we start it so inside the args let's pass in the amount let's say i want to increment by one unit and let's say for 100 times similarly let's create a deposit uh, withdrawal thread now let's start these two threads so deposit thread dot start withdraw thread dot start and let's join them deposit thread dot join and withdraw thread dot join at last print the balance so let's run this and see what happens so what would you expect i am incrementing this 200 100 times by one and in another thread i am decrementing this 200 by 100 times so what will be the ultimate amount it is going to be 200 which is which is correct here let's say now let's say i increment this 100 to 1000 let's say 10000 the it still remains 200 now let's increment this to 1 lakh okay now when we run this it actually has changed why is it so now when we change it again to let's say 10 lakhs it's not 200 anymore so what is happening over here so when we when these functions run in different threads they are updating the balance in different threads though it is a global variable two balance updates can come at the same time and the system will process only one request at a time so sometimes the balance amount gets added while the negative does not get uh, subtracted because both the request comes at the same time while the system executes only one so we need something like a lock which would lock this balance amount when it's updating and allow only one thread to update this balance at a time so for this we are going to use lock so we first make a object of uh, the lock class using this threading dot lock uh, class now what we want let's say i will pass the locks to this function okay and let's say here too that i am passing this lock as argument i'm passing this lock object as arguments to this deposit function and withdraw function now we have to acquire the lock before the balance get up gets updated so we write lock dot a c q i r e lock dot acquire and when the balance got updated we do lock dot release okay and same is the case with lock dot uh, with withdrawal we drew log dot acquire and log dot release now what happens is this is called the critical section actually so this section will get run by one th thread at a time that means this balance will get updated by one thread at a time so now let's run this it's still at 10 lakhs now it's 200 now if we lessen the value it should actually print out 200 and there we go that's a thread synchronization that we were talking about now creating threads in this fashion has become old the new way of creating threads is using thread pool executors we are going to see what they are in the next video